Uh, I, I hopefully the sound is gonna be okay because we're in the lobby of uh, like this venue where we have a uh, like rehearsal later. Some of you might be asking yourself, Lady Genevieve, what the devil are you doing in Ljubljana? Well, a couple of months ago, I did an interview with a Slovenian band called Joker Out. What does SSF mean? <laughs> <laughs> well. Now, I guess I didn't do a horrible job because one of the members decided to invite me to their big arena show here in Ljubljana. And at first, when this was brought up to me, I thought, Are you on drugs? Why would I go all that way just for that? I don't know anything about Slovenia or Ljubljana. I wouldn't know the first thing about what to do while I'm there. It's not a short trip. But then I remembered something. Basic geography. See, when you look at the map of Europe, you can see what's right next to Slovenia. Italy. And I thought to myself, Self, you've never been to Italy. But some of your favorite movies, including Ridley Scott's House of Gucci, filmed on location in Italy. So I realized that if I were to do a trip to Italy, I could live my best life I could indulge in all of my film fantasies. <laughs> I don't consider myself a particularly ethical person, but I am fair. And then pop on over to Slovenia on the way back. So that's what I did. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. I did do a sort of part two follow-up interview with a couple of the band members. They were having a virtual press day of sorts and they were kind enough to include me on the lineup so I will now be sharing that. Hopefully you don't mind a bit of overly <laughs> chaotic editing choices. So keep watching, enjoy the interview, and I will check back in with everything else. Are you just looking for fun or are you looking for love? With the new song Sunny Side of London being in English, I was curious about if that felt like an organic expansion creatively or if the creative process feels different to do in English. I know you guys all speak English, but it's not your first language. I can't even imagine trying to write, you know, eloquently in a language that I'm not using as often. Yeah, well, I guess it's a natural question which arises when we start throwing out music in English. And it's definitely, let's say, a multi-layered uh, answer. Um, the first, the first thing to consider is that um, it's not like we purposefully made the song in English just because it's the thing to do after you gain some international success um, but it has always come naturally to us to create songs in English even um, the songs which have been released previous on the uh, first two albums at least half of them were originally written in English uh, just because it's a it's a much easier language to compose with. We always used some gibberish English lyrics to create a melody um, and then after that translate it or like give completely different lyrics in Slovenian just to have it be in Slovenian. Um, and this time around we were like, we started the song and it made it like felt natural to sing it in English and we were like, let's not translate it. It's time maybe to try out a completely English single. And that's how it ha happened. And then, of course, it's also a, a big, let's say, plus that if you want to gain an international and commercial audience, Slovenian is, I don't think, really going to cut it, let's say. You know, I noticed the, during your first wave of having to do more international press that you all were poking fun at how much you were being asked about what does Joker out mean? But I... <laughs> Nobody's interested in that, so Ooh. congrats. Ooh. They all want to Ooh. know where her name comes from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did have a um, a bit of curiosity about the fact that the band name is in English, and I don't really know anything about the Slovenian music industry. So is that common for bands to have band names in English, or is it an anomaly on your part? Yeah, it is probably. It is yeah, quite yeah. common. Um, I think English names sound cooler, 
for band names. Like Slovenian, Slovenian is a beautiful language and it works really well in um, poetry and um, songs and stuff like that. But I think name-wise, Slovenia, Slovenian is quite poor. And I think that's like, maybe that was subconsciously what led us to decide on an English, um, English name. And because I was the one who threw out Joker out as an option, I guess that's a relevant factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was surprised that nobody tried to build on that talking point since it was um, so frequently asked. And even when you're asked it and you would outright say in the interview, like, oh, yeah, we get asked this all the time. If I said that, if I asked you something and you that was your response, I'd be super embarrassed and I would try to expand on it. But no, undo that. So, anymore. so I guess our campaign works well. <laughs> well, I'm assuming at this point, you know, there's enough. God, you guys did so many interviews during that whole commotion that I think there's more material available to research. We talked a little bit last time about obviously the current lineup of five was not the original lineup of five. So when you encountered these moments of having to swap somebody out and bring somebody new in, what was the criteria or was there any extra criteria beyond just a certain level of proficiency at playing an instrument, like a certain personality trait or work ethic or whatever it might be that was really integral to make you decide who to bring in? Well, I guess it would make the most sense to talk about how we chose Nate um, as the definitely right person to join us. I mean, a basic knowledge of their instrument was, of course, a necessary factor, but I, I think Nate excels at that. The other, like, really important thing was how they would fit in. And, I mean, you never know before you start, and I, I had not known Nate before. No, he came into the band met. before we hadn't met, and he was actually... Um, Natsa was proposed by our previous band. Uh, I mean, the proposition to have Natsa in the band was was made by our previous bass player. He was like, "Please, I know I left, and the one thing I want to do, uh, the one thing I want you to do because I've left, is to pick this goddamn bassist." And that's why he came, and it was a bit of a leap of faith. But honestly, Slovenia doesn't have many young, good bass players. We have no other choice. We were quite limited in our choice. Not that it that matters. <laughs> Not that it matters right now. Um, but uh, it just kind of worked out, I guess. And he fit in super naturally. And I don't know if you want to add anything else. I didn't didn't believe at first that we could like get along so quickly. Mm. It was surreal. Like that's. I don't know. It feels like we've been together for yeah. years, but it has been only a year. Oh, right, because you're the newest. I'm the newest. Out of the five. Yeah, yeah. This is a more technical question, but when you're coming in and there's this whole back catalog of songs that already exist that you're going to be expected to play at gigs and whatnot, what is the process for you to learn to play those songs? Because I'm very old school. For me, my frame of reference is sheet music. But I don't think that's really how most bands operate. I'm assuming. I don't know. I could be wrong. You can correct me. But most of uh, bands doesn't like even read music. I hmm. do. And I think you do. Yeah, I do. you read music. Yeah, but we don't have any sheets. Uh, yeah. like Joker out uh, sheets. But I'm actually working on some sheet music of Carpe Diem and uh, oh, and right. the Sunny Side of London. Oh, nice. It's like a gift to all the bass players that want to learn new songs. Um, but, but yeah, you just listen to the tracks. I right? just like try to play it by ear, you know, that that's it and try to rehearse it at home as best as possible. And I used to like work at, as a session musicians, like before Joker out. So I was used to learning a lot of songs, like 500 songs per year. So it wasn't that difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. No, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Throw me a freaking bone here. I'm the boss. Need the info. On a more lighthearted note, it repeatedly gets brought up in interviews. Austin Powers. Yeah, I'm really going to ask about this. Even if you're not being asked about it, you'll be like doing this to each other. And the yes, interviewer, I don't know if they don't understand the reference. <laughs> what is the fascination with those movies? Or I don't know if you have a preference since there's more than one film. Well, Austin Powers is just like a 
stupid movie that we all happen to love, all of us in the band, and it kind of embodies what we thought we wanted to have in our music um, when we started out. We wanted to have his mojo. We even borrowed the term shagadelic from Austin Powers. And like just the whole uh, experience and vibe that Mike Myers and the other actors give you um, in the movie is just a feeling that we wanted to convey to our fans uh, while we were on stage or while they listened to our music. Um, so that's that's why Austin Powers. And it's it's like it's the stupidest movie ever, but I love it. And uh, it's, like, it's really good. Like, um, like when you're down, you just try and search for Austin Powers movies on Netflix or whatever. It's great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're always doing this in interviews. Like it would just keep popping up. And I would just be like, is nobody going to acknowledge that? It's maybe too niche because I don't, is I mean, it? I don't know, know a lot of people who get Austin Powers references here in Slovenia or in Europe. I'm a movie girly. Okay, like this is Lady Gaga and House of Gucci. Not to waste a bunch of time telling you about what I've been doing in Italy, but like I went to uh, one of the villas that they filmed at. Konnichiwa, Mr. Gucci. And I ate at a restaurant today that they ate at in the movie. So, Patricia, uh, what? That was top I, of I my to do top list. Of your Instagram post about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, but it's interesting that, you know, you have this fixation with Austin Powers because it pulled out this old memory I have of seeing Camelot, which is this musical, live. And the actor who was playing King Arthur in that, I don't even remember what year I saw this production. It was Michael York, who plays Basil Exposition. Uh. Now, at the time, I don't know if I had even seen the Austin Powers films. He was um, Tybalt in Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet, so that's why I was excited. Turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. But yeah, I was just like, oh my god, childhood memory unlocked. That <laughs> like I saw Basil Exposition in a musical. But yeah, no, it was a, it was a fun little thing. I mean, also uh, one other thing is Elvis Costello. He appears in, I think, the second installment of Austin Powers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bert Bacharach and Mr. Elvis Costello. That just, I don't know, it just seems like the universe telling us something. Um, mm -hmm. Being as we've had a song together with him now, and that's the first time I heard of Elvis through, through the movie. Of course, we then, I then later listened to his music and became a fan, but he, Austin Powers introduced me to Elvis, which is great, I guess. Yeah, well, whatever gets you there is the interconnectivity of art. Speaking of films, though, I was wondering, sometimes you'll see movies referenced in music videos. People will recreate a certain location or, you know, they'll dress in certain costumes. Is that something you would ever want to do for any potential future single? Do you have a particular film in mind? I mean, like, besides Austin Powers, just because I feel like that's a little obvious because we've already been talking about it. Is that something that you've ever pondered? Because, um, like, there's, um, oh my god, I'm so jet-lagged, I'm forgetting the name of the movie, but there's this uh, movie from, I think it's the, in the 80s with Jamie Lee Curtis and John Travolta, where there's this workout scene, and they're hip thrusting for, like, way too long, and that got recreated for this Swedish dance song called Call On Me, which I'm assuming you've yeah, heard. I remember, yeah, I remember. Yeah, like, I don't think I even knew that that was from a movie until later. But do you have any movies in mind that you like, oh, if we could parody that or if we could reference that? It would be fun to that. create the, the, the party from The Great Gatsby. Ooh, huh? that would be nice. Be yeah, no, I, I'd cool. definitely love to do an homage video, uh, a music video. Um, I just don't know which movie I, it would depend on the song um i mean as it should i don't know like there's a million good movies it should be a movie that all all five of us enjoy though so what so it would have to be austin powers then <laughs> 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 Make it afraid. that's not a movie i know i know but <laughs> that would be really bad, <laughs> that would um, be really bad. come in Take your pants off. There's this giant gap in stuff that I've not been able to ask because I never get Boyan on here. And there's all these 
questions that are related to the origins of the band and that I can't get into without. I mean, you can you can ask me a, a, on the origins of, origins of the band. I was here from the start. Well, I did want to know because he's told the story a lot about how he basically poached you, you two, the guitarists from another band. Can you elaborate on that? What is the pitch? What is he saying to you that is like, oh yeah, fuck my old band. Let's go with this guy. <laughs> Um, well, the thing is, Boyan, we all knew that Boyan is going to be something that he has a special quality, um, artistic and, um, let's just say showmanship quality, which we all recognized already in those early years. So that's why his pitch didn't have to be like anything special. It was to have him call you up and ask you to be in a band was enough for you to be like fuck any band that you were at at the moment like even my dad who's also a musician when i had the previous band he was telling me like man you should really start a band with boyan um so the moment he called up we all knew that this is the right thing to do the pitch wasn't anything elaborate he was just like hey i'm not satisfied with my current guitarists would you want to replace them it was literally that Okay, so this next segment is something that I envisioned where I decided under the uh, delusional belief that I would get to speak through all five of them, that we could do a sort of get to know my music taste segment, particularly because I find that you can learn a lot about any type of artistic creative person and what they create if you get a deeper insight into what their artistic references are. What is an album with no skips? An album that you want to play the whole album, you don't want to skip any of the songs. Fleetwood Mac Rumors. You can go your own way. Favorite Worst Nightmare, Arctic Monkeys. Should I answer these two? If sure, we're sure. all sharing. Okay. I will say Saint Elsewhere by Gnarls Barkley. Oh, like good. right from Go Go Gadget Gospel. I just I get so turned to that song. A song you love by a girl group. Oh, not yeah. in your wheelhouse that you have to think about it. <laughs> I, I, like I have all to think. Girl, girl bands. like Any girl group. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? Do I even listen to any girl groups? Three hours later. Like, like Joan Jett stuff. But that's not an only girl, girl group. That's just a it's kind of is. It's just she had an old old girl. Oh really? Yeah, okay. She... Oh okay. I have a thing about feminine rage. Okay, what's your favorite old group? It doesn't have to be your number one favorite. It's just a song you love. Whatever comes to your head when I ask that. Mine is "I'm Good" by Black because it's a banger. It's from the Honey soundtrack, which is a very silly movie, but the song <laughs> is a banger. <laughs> Uh, like I have just a mental blockade right now. I can't even. So I. I can't even think of one girl band. Okay. Okay. So. The new headline is Joker out are sexist and they don't know girl groups. Boom. Roasted. Moving on to the next one. A song you love by a boy band. Okay. Name name me five all girl bands. Okay, we have like seven more questions and I literally got an email telling me to not go over. So please, can we get through this? <laughs> it's okay. I want to know some girl bands right yeah, now so because I can only think of female pop singers. Um, Little Mix, The Spice Girls, TLC. Yeah, okay. I know. Yeah. No, I don't want no scrubs. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. I know Spice Girls, but I can't think of a song of them. Like, I've never listened to Spice Girls. I swear. Like. <laughs> okay, well then you need to watch Spice World, but anyway. Moving on to the next one, a song you love by a boy band. Uh, the Backstreet Boys, um, 
Tell me why. Uh, I don't know what the song's about. I want it that way. Good choice. Yes. yes. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. From the way that it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, ever. <laughs> Never gonna be fine. The end sync one. End sync. End sync. Sorry, I have to open my. I only I only know like songs by the, the melody and the lyrics. I don't know. Three hours later. End sync. Oh, I have a Jackson 5, I Want You Back. That's a boy band. Good one. That's a good uh, one. Dude. I'm going to say... <laughs> oh, baby, kill me one more chance. I'm going to say Keep Your Head Down by TVXQ. They're a K-pop boy okay. band. They were five and then they were two. I think they're still running. I don't keep up with them that much, but I know that song and it's a banger. And the choreo slays. Keep your head down. The question is a little bit different for each of you. So for Chris, a guitarist that you admire, and for Nace, a bass player that you admire. The first, like, biggest inspiration in guitar that I had was John Frusciante from Red Hot Chili Peppers, so I'll, I'll name him. Like, my fir first inspiration in bass was Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will answer that question of somebody that inspires me for how they do interviews, and it's Craig Ferguson. He used to do the Late Late Show before <coughs> James Corden ugh, took over. Uh, but Craig Ferguson is very funny, and he's Scottish, and he's iconic, and nobody does interviews better than him. What would you classify as real sex? <laughs> would you like me to show you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what that was? Yeah. That was a Scottish vacuum of charm. Yeah, yeah that is. <laughs> Next one is a cover that you love. So like a cover of a song that was originally Ooh, from someone um, else. Um, Dance Monkey by Milky Chance. Oh, that's a really good, that's a good one. Shall I see dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, oh, oh. Three Fallen John Mayer. <laughs> Free Fallen. Mine is Quindon Tarver's cover of When Doves Cry. It's used in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, and it is dramatic as hell and it's iconic, and I love it. I have to listen to it. I'm a big Prince fan, so. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's really really good. When doves cry, yeah, yeah. If you could sample any song for a Joker out release, which song would you sample money is no object permission is no object you don't have to worry about being told no or that you can't afford it there are no limits but does that mean like modern day sampling where you can just steal the whole melody or just it's whatever it is to you like madonna sampled abba in um hung yeah. up and diddy sampled sting but that one i think he i don't know if he asked permission but now he pays sting so it worked out fine in the end <laughs> but yeah it's whatever sampling means to you however you would want to do a sample what's the melody that i really want wish i had written uh californian dream and mama mama's Ooh, and the papas that's, come on that's really good that's a good shot California, California dreaming, such a winner's day. I don't know. I, for me, it's like probably anything that the Beatles wrote. I don't know. In my life, let's say. All these places have their moments with lovers and friends. I will just, I mean, I'm not making music, but I will answer the question anyway, since I've already been answering. I would say I want to use the production track from Are You Feeling Me by Alia, because, I mean, basically anything that Timbaland has produced is like, 
a really good production track and then just build a new song on top of it. You should do that. It would be fun. A song that makes you feel like a kid again. You hear it and you're immediately transported back to like, I am a child, I am in my childhood. Ooh, the ketchup song. The ketchup. Oh. Like Ozone, what was the song of Ozone? Drago stayed in Tay? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. No ma, no ma, yeah. You know, he, Dan Balan, he did a revamp of that song. It's Didn't called he? Numa Numa 2. Yeah, and it Numa charted Numa really two. high in Japan. And honestly, I kind of like it more than the original. He got like a new singer to come on. And it, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Mine is Odori Pompokorin, which is a Japanese song by BB Queens. I hear it and I'm just like, I am a child. I still have the CD at home, but it's a mini CD. So it's only like this big oh, when a regular CD is like this. Man. So yeah, it's, it's only got two songs on the CD because it's only this big. A song you love in a language that is not Slovenian and not in English. Due vite. Marco Mengoni. He was the Italian the, the Italian song on this year's Eurovision. It's incredible. Stromae. Uh, what was the. Allora Andan. Oh, yeah. Allora Andan. Mine is Intifada by Ska Pay. It's a Spanish ska band. Or Pour Oublier by Kenji Girac. A song that makes you cry. Or song. very emotional if you're weird about admitting that you cry. <laughs> like a song, a song by Damien Rice. What was the, the title? I have to. Uh, Three hours later. Well, uh, mine is "Whisper of a song. Thrill" by Thomas Newman, but that's a it's a score. Which one? It's, it's called "Whisper of a Thrill" by Thomas Newman. It's from the Meet Joe Black score. It's from a movie, and like every time I hear it, I am transcended to a different plane of existence, and I'm just weeping. <laughs> Nice. can you repeat yours? Because I think I was talking over you and no, I just no, want to make sure sorry. I got it. I was interrupting you. Damon Rice, uh, the blower's daughter. I can't take my eyes off of you. Thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully I didn't um, break your brains too much by asking you to think about girl groups. Um, so clearly we know all your little fangirls need to start sending you their favorite uh, girl group tracks but gave, it's an injustice people. because we really love female pop singers like we listen to britney spears all the time and like it's just groups that apparently we've missed out on so if any fans want to send us some girl group recommendations i would love to hear them but otherwise i guess we love female pop music come on dua lipa oh dua lipa dancing with somebody you guys should do a cover if you're Britney, if you're really Britney fans and you're not just saying that to pander. Lace and Leather, it's a Britney yeah. Spears song. It's not a single, it's an album track and it's really good. And it has like a really good hook that I'm like, okay, you can clearly take that, play it on an actual instrument and... Which is dangerous. Look at the material. You should be going home anyway. You can anyway. be the judge of it. I'm for real gonna let you guys get going. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with me. I guess maybe I'll see you at the, at the arena. I don't know what the setup is. You might be all the way over there. I'll just be like. Oh, you're coming. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Chris, Sorry. did you
tell them that I'm coming? I, I mean, so much has been happening. I, I... <laughs> it didn't even hurt. I'm <laughs> Okay, so I have officially arrived at Stojitsa Arena. Maybe if I say it slow enough, I won't completely butcher the pronunciation, but I have arrived and it was a journey to get here. First of all, the taxi took 20 minutes to get to me because of all the traffic and then I uh, finally got here and had no idea where to check in because they gave me a number of an entrance that was not on the map for the venue. There's all these maps surrounding the arena that explain the different entrances and uh, that number was not on that map. So I just kept asking employees, hoping that someone would take pity on me in my uh, desperate gaijin state. And eventually someone was nice enough to walkie talkie radio to someone else and figure out uh, that they would just escort me to where I needed to be. So I'm officially checked in, I'm here. I have about an hour and some change until the opening act will start. The opener has about an hour long set. I already ran into two of the guys on my way in and out of the press entrance but i have not seen the one who invited me yet so we'll get there we'll make it happen three hours later okay so the gig is probably about two thirds finished now i know i'm not inside but in my defense my feet hurt <laughs> it's a really good show though there's um really vibrant colorful lighting and uh one thing you pick up on fairly quickly is that if the song is even remotely sad the lighting will be blue <laughs> it's a really good show there's a great energy and atmosphere in the crowd you know when i think back to some of the concerts that i've been to over the years sometimes some crowds you just you, d you don't know which way the wind's gonna blow if people are going to get a little too much. Initially, I was a little bit, well, I didn't really know what to make of the fact that a lot of the audience skews quite young. Even uh, the person at the hotel who was working the front desk when they were helping to order me a taxi, they had said, oh yeah, it's gonna be just a bunch of teenage girls or it's going to be a lot of teenage girls. And I kind of went, oh, okay, so it's one of those. Thankfully, my mother gifted me these earplugs that, um, they're special earplugs, so I can still hear the music very clearly, but it helps to dampen the, I don't exactly know the vernacular to explain how these work, but essentially the sound does not sound muffled, but it controls the level of volume so that it's not gonna result in you having ringing ears for three days which is very nice i don't know why i'm putting this back in i think i'm about done for the night i am now back in the press room and i am charging my mobile phone i am looking through my gear i will probably start setting up within the next i don't know 10 to 20 minutes for now i just really want to rest my feet specifically because i don't want the dominant thought on my brain during the press conference to be ooh my feet really hurt <laughs> i don't want that to be layering over everything else i'm really glad i came i'm having a lovely time and cautiously tentatively uh looking forward to the press conference it is the morning after the big arena show and i am still wearing my press wristband i know we're very fancy over here gucci gucci looks that good after the concert there was a press conference that i was allowed to attend as a member of the press i was the only person there who did not speak slovenian and i was also the only person who was in the room that was not white i'm shocked this is shocking press conference began with a photo call, which I filmed along with the entire press conference. However, like I said, the press conference is in Slovenian, except for, of course, I had to ask a question, because why am I going to come all this way 
and not ask something. Also, I've never done a Joker Out interview with Boyan, and Boyan would be present. I was able to ask a question to the band. But before we get into that clip, I also want to mention that while I was mentioning evil mega corporations in the music industry. I had the mic in one hand and then with the other hand, I had to throw up one of these. I wanted to mention that just because since you can't see me on camera, I don't know if it makes sense why they start doing this out of nowhere. It's because I instigated, because that's what I'm doing here, apparently, instigating. <laughs> A question in English, if you don't mind. Congratulations on the show, by the way. Thank it was you. really fun. You've hit an all-time high with your career this year with touring internationally and all the while staying largely independent. In your professional opinion, is there a viable path for other artists to make it big without becoming hostages to the uh, evil corporations in the music industry? <laughs> for 100 billion dollars. And what are some of the changes you'd like to see implemented in the infrastructure of the global music industry for the betterment of artists over corporations? <laughs> we just told you we have completely empty heads. <laughs> okay, let's try it. Um, I'd say for Slovenia, um, definitely artists can do much more than they can imagine uh, without a label. Um, that's how we did it and that's how I'd advise younger artists to do it. Um, but the international scene is quite, quite, quite different. Um, so we're kind of finding the right balance right now between being independent and having this corporate mechanism behind which will eventually probably bring us some gigs in um, like a tour, um, a legit tour uh, outside of Slovenia and which will probably hopefully start a career. So as of now, I don't know if we can clearly say um, what the right path is. Um, we're, we're still trying to figure things out. Um, I'll say that in terms of being signed to a label and having this truly 100% gigantic mechanism behind you um, is, well, we're, we are thankful for that. We don't have that. And we hope that we will be able to stay independent uh, as long as we possibly can. Um, at least hold um, claim and rights to our music rights and our authorship. Um, it is very difficult to look at this from just one perspective because music business is a huge giant uh, that cannot be tackled just from you know one point of view um, so it is very uh, clear and we understand why artists choose to go with majors um, because it does make the path a lot easier and a lot quicker i guess if things start start to happen like the way they should um i believe that this year and what we've done is something that Slovene artists will hopefully understand as a yes, you can do it, you can try to go outside. Obviously Eurovision is a huge catapult and it wouldn't be fair to say that all of the artists have the same opportunity by just being an artist um, because uh, it is very hard or close to impossible to get 100 million, 160 million people watching you in one night. Um, but uh, I guess just the vision of people and young artists understanding that there is something outside of our borders um, is a great thing. Um, and I'm very, very hopeful of what is going to come. Um, and hopefully along our path, uh, we are going to tackle Europe, we are going to tackle um, countries outside of Europe, hopefully, hopefully next year. Um, yeah, world domination. Uh, that we are that we are going to be able to take some Slovene artists with us also uh, to this path. So I guess the future is very very bright. Yeah. Thank you. I was able to interact with the guys at various points throughout the night. So Jan and Yure, I briefly ran into before the concert as I was going in and out of an area where they were occasionally outside after the concert i was finally able to in real life meet chris and mace which was a fun little reunion of sorts considering that we had just 
spoken a couple of days prior and of course I finally met Boyan and I have to say he was a total sweetheart considering that he and I had never met before so there's not really any cause to be overly familiar. In general though, I had a really nice time. It was a fun little way to cap off an adventure. My first time traveling post everything that happened in 2020. I was definitely very anxious about going. I was originally supposed to have a friend come with me. They had an emergency last minute so they were not able to attend the various adventures that I had intended on getting up to. I definitely want to thank Joker Out and their entire massive team, everybody that was helping to have that show up and running, be it members of the crew that were handling everything to do with staging and equipment. There was just so much to handle because it was a big arena show. Also, everyone that was involved with the publicity side of things and just in general, there were a lot of members of the crew that they kind of ended up having to help me because I had so many questions and I just I didn't know what to do or where to go or where I was. Anybody that was part of any crew type of job, be it for the stage or the publicity team, I really want to emphatically thank all of them just because there were several people who helped me in various ways at one point or another because I was so confused about where to go and how things were run and I just didn't know anything and there wasn't a lot that I could intuitively pick up because it was a venue I had never been to before in a country I've never visited that predominantly speaks a language that I don't know how to communicate in Slovenian. So if any of you are ever considering traveling to Slovenia, or at least Ljubljana, that's the only city I can attest to because it's the only one I visited, then I would say go for it. Why not? Life is shorter than you would like for it to be more often than not, and you might as well treat yourself to an adventure. And if that's what you deem to be the most worthy of your time and energy and the financial side of things as well, then yes, absolutely, go for it. But of course the burning question remains, will I ever get a Joker Out interview on my channel where Boyan is actually present? I don't know.